Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is just take you visually through um, some developments to illustrate what Keats just said about the difference between um, the data curation layer, uh, the applications on top of it, and uh, the core that we have in the middle. So uh, this is another way to draw this picture. I will mainly be taking uh, examples from the CTMM Trades project, which also have been presented throughout the course of, um, of this workshop, uh, but um, also some others. So as Keith said, um, here, if, if you look at this diagram, um, what we're we really talking about when we say we want to improve uh, the core and, and some of these recommendations from developers, that's all work that happens on the database and API layers. And um, we've been working on that, I think, you know, diligently over the last two years. So, for example, one of the first things that um, in the CTMM trade project, what we did in terms of APIs is to rephrase the core API. Uh, and then J&J &J sponsored us in 2014 to build the RESTful API. These are great advantages, and I'm going to show you a couple application that simply use those RESTful API to achieve very different results. Uh, you can see them up here. So cohort selection and analytics workflows are, of course, two components that are in the current Transmart UI uh, app. But then if you go further, uh, uh, who here attended today's uh, data science training session? Did you like it? Yes. yes? It's cool, right? It's a great use of technology. Um, just thanks to the RESTful API that we built on Transmart, you can have this Jupyter interface. See BioPortal, I'm going to show you a couple more. So first of all, did you know there is a Transmart Android client? No. Go, what? He made it in his own time. I mean. Go on, let's give an applause. That's just, that's just amazing. I'm not sure if it can do a lot. I think it's mainly just showing some uh, some box plots, but uh, I applaud the work. And this is thanks to you know the RESTful API that, that we built, which allows Vart in his basically Saturday. I don't know when you do it, but uh, to write an Android application that can show data which coming from the Transform platform it uses the authentication. So you have to log in. Right, with your credentials, and you can show them. Okay, here's another example. See, by a portal. If you attended a talk by um, Jan Hudecek and uh, Peter Koch, you will have seen that uh, we've actually set up see by a portal in trade as a specific application for oncology. See, by a portal is way better to support some of the uh, specific oncology questions that that uh, scientists have than Transmart the main interface. So, you know, instead of rebuilding or trying to rebuild all the features that BioPortal offers in, inside the Transmart app, what we now have chosen to do is simply let's put BioPortal on top of Transmart. Here's another example, SmartR. Uh, Sasha, well, you just saw it. Sasha, again, is using the core API that we developed in Trade, and um, uh, I think actually first was using the rest of the API, now switch fully to the core. Anyway, it's using the APIs to make this interactive analytics application. Another example of something that we achieved um, by just you know, making, making these investments in the database layer in the APIs, which allows us then to much faster develop applications. Here's another one, it also presented at this conference by Risa. Risa created, and this was for the translocation uh, project, and is part of the, the long-term effort that we have in the architecture working group um, to sort of build out the next version of Transmart. This is a prototype of the UI. So remember, I told, um, if you were to hear Monday, I, I told you about the workshop we had in January this year where we uh, had some discussion between the main developers of the platform what technology choices we should make if we want to build a new UI. And we, we chose Angular, we chose some other um, uh, technologies like D3.js, and this, the main goal of this effort was actually to test if these technologies are indeed the ones that are viable and just to show what they can do. Again, that's what this prototype does. Thanks to completely, again, built on the RESTful API. Okay, here's a completely different example. Within trade, and this, I think we had a poster up here on this, this project, or should presented it, but anyway, within trade we have the master study, which is a long-running 
um, cohort in, in Maastricht in the south of the Netherlands, which is basically about 5,000 people with uh, type 2 uh, diabetes mellitus and uh, 5,000 controls. And, um, and as I said, it's a long-running cohort study, so these people come in every year and they have follow-ups, so you have long, lots of longitudinal data. And uh, again, we put the data in Transmart. This application has an entirely different purpose. It's just a way for researchers to request access to this data. So they have to state um, which study they want. They have to indicate the variables. It's, it's too small probably, and it's also a work in progress. But on the right, you can see it's just some checkboxes they can click right now, uh, which indicate which variables they want. And then um, this request gets sent to uh, the study owner, who can then review the request on, uh, in terms of the scientific, um, uh, the scientific goal that is stated, plus the variables that are requested. And then if the um, uh, data review board approves it, the researcher gets a link where they can download the data. And this is, again, entirely different from, from Transmart, the user interface, but it uses that same Transmart database layer. So another example of, and, and you have so many applications and use cases in translational research, and the people that want to download this data are the, typically the people that will get afterwards loaded in SAS or R to do their own uh, analysis. And um, this is just perfect for them. They just want the data and, and, and move on. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a screenshot from today's data science training, right? Again, an example where we, we took First of all, the, the RESTful API of Transmart, and in this case, the R client that is built on top of that, which was also, by the way, sponsored and um, uh, uh, financed by J&J. &J. And then, on top of the RESTful API and the R client, we put this Jupyter. So this is now a way to um, write your R code and intersperse that with, with calls to retrieve specific data sets. You can save... Um, both the data, and by the way, this works for graphs as well, in your notebook. And as a data scientist, when you uh, go home and you, you come here the next week, you think, oh yeah, I want to retrieve that, that, uh, that script and those results that I had last week, uh, but I want to modify a few things. That's exactly what you can do in Jupyter. You know, you just modify the code, you hit enter, and you get the updated result. Another example of something that we can achieve by having an API. So, you know, I think that is just fantastic if you, if you put it all like this. And I'm missing a lot of example. Like I said, I'm, I'm just putting this together from trade. But look at how Paul uses I2B2 and Transmart. Right? There's so many different use cases. And uh, I think it demonstrates that even though my talk Monday was about I want to invest more in that layer, that's just because I want to be able to make even more application and make them even quicker. Um, I think this demonstrates that we already have done quite a lot of investment and that we already have quite a lot of applications out there which we can use. That's the point I want to make. Thank you.